All right, Friedman. I had said to Simon earlier in the year, I would not be surprised. In fact, I was placing a bet that there would not be a quarterback taken in the top 10. Am I right or wrong? Who will the first quarterback be and where will they be taken? Chad, I think you might be right. The, the sharp mock drafts right now are pointing towards a quarterback going at Carolina, number six to Carolina, but it's pretty split. They're pointing that way just a little bit. And I honestly don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to try to trade back because they don't have picks in rounds two and three, uh, try to trade back and maybe draft a quarterback later in the first round. If I had to say right now, who's the number one quarterback and where he goes, I would say it's Malik Willis going number 20 to the Steelers. This is a bad quarterback class. It's just, it's not bad, but it's pretty close. I mean, the under two and a half quarterbacks taken. I know there's a lot of heat in mock drafts that we could see three, maybe four quarterbacks go. A couple quarterbacks sneak into the end of round one. I will say consistently, having studied mock drafts for years, quarterbacks are consistently over-mocked in this exercise. Uh, we just routinely see one too many quarterbacks mocked. In, and so I'm going to take the under, two and a half quarterbacks. If we see a quarterback go in round one uh, or in the top 10, it's, it's only one. And if I had to bet right now, I would bet no. Interesting. All right. So you're saying the under is two and a half. We can make the assumption that it's Malik Willis from Liberty and Kenny Pickett from the University of Pittsburgh. If there were a third, who sneaks in there? Friedman, you go. It's split between Desmond Ritter and Matt Corral. I would actually lean towards Corral. He's played in the SEC uh, multiple years of production there, and he got an invitation to the NFL draft. And that doesn't mean everything, but guys who get invitations to the draft, especially if they are quarterbacks, they almost always go on the first day. So that makes me a little bit nervous about the over under of two and a half, because there are three quarterbacks who are going to be attending the draft, but still, this is a bad class. I'm thinking of Geno Smith slipping to day two. I could see something like that. This is what makes betting on the draft so interesting and a little bit absurd you guys are both as deep in modeling analytics on field translation to what that means for a number against the spread or totals or player props whatever it is what you just said Friedman I want to unpack this so people really understand how this is both completely fun and completely absurd you're judging the sharp mocks, which I don't know who that is. We're judging the fact that historically quarterbacks are over mocked and you're trying to into it from the league's invite invite of a third quarterback that he is likely to be drafted on day one. And what is the value of that potentially being in the first round? That is no way to make a decision on betting. It's totally ridiculous. It is totally ridiculous. But the thing is, you can quantify some of this and put it in a model, um, which is still ridiculous on its own. But at least you can make some sort of fake numerical judgment. Simon, are you standing by your claim that a quarterback will be taken in the top 10? And if so, have you placed a bet, bet on that quarterback? Yeah, of course. We all know a quarterback's going top 10, Chad. It was, it was asinine when you said it. I said it was stupid. Now we sit here and Matthew Freeman's backing you up. What the hell is happening? <laughs> um, like, it's like, it's like looking back and being like, did Josh Allen deserve to be a top 10 quarterback? It's the same thing. These guys are just this raw ball of clay. Like, if a kid's over 6'3", he's got a big-ass arm like this kid from Liberty does, and he's fast. They don't care that he was throwing a garbage and that his numbers weren't great. They're looking at what can I take this clay and mold him into? So, I mean, I've heard Pittsburgh is obsessed with him. I could see them moving up and grabbing him. I can't see Carolina passing on it just because, like you said, they don't have a second, third round pick. This is kind of it for this coaching staff. It feels like, is he really going to tie his job to Sam Darnold this upcoming season? And 
they're going to be terrible in Carolina and that's just it. Like they're going to fire the coaching staff and maybe the GM there in Carolina. I could see them being desperate. So to me, I, I could see Malik making the top 10. I've actually bet the over two and a half quarterbacks just because it's kind of like the Lamar Jackson thing. I've just seen teams, they trade back into the end of the first round to get that fifth year option. That's a big deal. Instead of waiting and taking a quarterback in the second round, you only have them for four years. They like to come back in. Could be Detroit that trades back into that first round and grabs that quarterback. So I am actually on the opposite side. I, I just like quarterback classes that people say the class sucks. Those are my favorite classes. Again, we talked about the Trubisky class. Everyone hated that class. People kept saying there's no number one quarterback. These guys aren't that great. Aren't that great. They'd be lucky if one of these guys becomes an all pro. Little did we know we had Mahomes in that class. So it, it is tough where it's just a lot of noise with the media, but I'm with them that I'm just, I'm not crazy about this class because of all the little warts these guys have. Like, 